en el árbol filogenético de los lagartos actuales, los gecotas vienen siendo el grupo hermano de todos los demás lagartos de, de, del mundo, incluidas las serpientes. Entonces es un grupo bastante importante porque, porque habla algo sobre la historia temprana de, del grupo. Me interesa mucho tu posición eh, con respecto a la posición filogenética de los gecos. Vos me decís que son eh, el grupo hermano de todos los demás. Eso es en función de una filogenia molecular, ¿no es cierto? En donde ubica a los gecos o a los divámidos como en la base. Pero sí. eh, nosotros también hemos hablado con los alumnos de esta eh, otra posición, eh, la morfológica, ¿no es cierto? En donde los gecos son partes de escleroglosa y sería iguaña los más basales. ¿Cuál es tu opinión entre estas dos diferentes eh, posibles filogenias. Sí, bueno, yo, yo soy un morfólogo, ¿no? Y yo siempre fui muy uh, pegado a la, a la filogenia morfológica, pero uh, viéndolo desde, desde el punto de vista de lo que conozco de, de los geckos, eh, hace un poco de, de sentido que, que estén ubicados en la base del, del grupo. Es uno, uno mira más o menos el, el plan corporal de... de que uno se imaginaría el, el ancestro de, un, de, de muchos de estos grupos de lagartos y, y viene a ser algo muy similar a un gecko. Entonces, de cualquier manera, se considere la, fi, la filogenia morfológica o molecular, los geckos siempre tienden a ser un grupo bastante eh, basal sí. en, en la filogenia. Aaron, uh, you know that there are two main uh, phylogenies for the lepidosaurias, the morphological and the molecular one. Which is for you uh, the, the best phylogeny by now? So luckily, working on geckos, um, the, what those two phylogenies both agree on is sort of the distinctiveness of geckos. So, From my point of view, for working on my group, it's I don't have to uh, I don't have to choose sides 100 because both both phylogenies argue that the that the geckos are quite distinctive from from all other groups. I think um, on the one hand, I was I grew up with the morphological phylogeny and it was one that that uh, made a lot of sense uh, really ever since the time of of camp. Um, it's, it was something that, that fit very well for what we knew about the biology of, uh, of uh, lepidosaurs. The molecular phylogeny is definitely disturbing in, in some ways because it takes groups that morphologically seem to be uh, very, very disparate from one another. Um, but I will actually take a, a sort of third pathway and say that I've recently been working on a new phylogeny with some, some colleagues, um, which actually gets different results. Um, and I'll, I'll just mention briefly, one of those results is that iguanian, pleurodont iguanians and acrodont iguanians not being together, not being monophyletic. Oh, that's shocking. And, and on the one hand, it is sort of shocking, but on the other hand, I can I can see that as being an, an example of extreme uh, convergence for a a lifestyle of being a diurnal ambush predator um, where colors and crests and all of those things that we think of for both of those groups uh, come into play. So although I think that the that the molecular phylogeny has some definite uh, has revealed some some patterns that I think are probably undeniable. I also think that the existing molecular phylogeny probably has still has problems in it. Um, and I think that it's a mistake when people think, well, morphology has uh, that morphology has problems with convergence. But of course, the molecular data can have convergence as well. It's just harder for us to see it. Um, so I, I think that that the the traditional morphological phylogeny uh, is certainly a good basis for understanding the biology of, of lepidosaurs, 
I think there's probably some corrections that are needed to that, um, but I don't necessarily feel that the current molecular phylogeny has all of those all of those corrections quite right. Um, so I think the truth probably lies somewhere in between. And when you look at at what they share, many of the larger groupings that are brought together uh, yeah. are are things that that are supported by both. So things things like amphibians and lacertids, which yes, are sense. you know that 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 are brought together by both of these. So I, I think that. Um, you know, our problem always with phylogenies are, are largely associated with these deeper branches where we're going to have the biggest problems, whether it's long branch attraction that happens yeah. with molecular phylogenies or whether it's a lack of certain combinations of morphological states at the, de at the deep parts of these trees. So I think it's, it, the answer is probably a little of both. Um, Okay. Un abrazo, Aaron, y muchísimas gracias por participar. Chau, chau. Chau. Yeah.